writing music is kind of like uh, channeling things and and therapeutical so that when I deal with an emotion through a song I kind of put it in a package and when it's done it's there and it's almost like it's released from me. When my father died uh, four years ago I had lots of dreams about him like mm -hmm. for probably the first two years when the dreams stopped I had kind of realized that he was gone. When you miss someone, they become alive in that moment. And that is beautiful because you're not connected to that all the time. I held your last breath. When I went to see you and did that uh, session, which was really lovely, I, when I, I I was not happy. I was uh, the only places I was happy was in my music. Uh, I hadn't really got my life sorted at that time. I had been through a really uh, like a, a kind of a dark relationship that I wasn't the dark one, but I was kind of drawn into a dark personality, and I was not happy those years. And I was I didn't sleep well. There was a lot of things that weren't happy. How are you doing, Arne? Are you okay? I'm good. I, yeah. I am. It's, it's, uh, I'm busy, but in a good way. So, um, lots, of, lots to do with the albums, which is good because it means that people want to talk to me about it. So, <laughs> yeah, it's not just one album, but it's two albums, right? Mm -hmm. If we look at the two titles of both albums, what does the Great Storm refer to? When I saw the title for the first time, I, I thought, oh, it's about 2020. Mm, I wish, right? <laughs> I wish it was. No. It would be lovely if that was that was the situation that we're finished with it. Um, no, it's it's actually a lyric that I started writing a few years ago. Uh, I was in a kind of song cycle and a period of my life that was a lot of was a lot of changing in my life, a lot of um, positive change. I found ways to to relate to life in a different way and, and found a more positive way of dealing with stress and dealing with with worrying and everything. This song is kind of a song that I wrote uh, after, because I have an autoimmune disease that I've been seriously ill to twice in my life. Um, and this last time was 2012, where I was hospitalized for a long time. And it was really, it took a long time to come out of it. But when I did come out of it, I, I had experienced a kind of euphoria, extreme relief in a way. and. And I just loved life and I walked around and I felt like I loved everyone I saw. It was like this universal love feeling and probably the chorus is something that I wrote down uh, around that time and I picked it up for this album so I kind of finished it. And it's it's a song that's supposed to describe that feeling when something's over, something yeah. terrible is over, that you have a feeling of relief and happiness and uh, and I hope that we get that next year. authentic in what I do. I don't want to release things that doesn't have a certain meaning. And all of these songs are, it's hard, for instance, to find favorites because all of them are important to me. And uh, they all carry some kind of message that I want to to bring forward. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of uh, realness in this music. So, and people don't have to like all the songs, but uh, if they can find a couple that can give them something, I'm very happy.
You're visiting my dreams. Where and when did you write Fingerprints? The, the music is written with me and Martin Hederus, uh, my, my co-producer and musician. The lyrics are a story about when my father died uh, four years ago. I had lots of dreams about him, like mm -hmm. for probably the first two years. He, he showed up in my dreams over and over again. And it was also very, it was also obvious that um, when the dream stopped, I had kind of realized that he was gone. It was like a parallel, uh, because it takes time to, to really understand that a parent is gone because they're such a big part of you. So even though you know it here, you have to know it here. And that took quite a long time. And when I knew, I knew that he was also gone from my dreams. So it was like I was connecting to him still in my dreams. So uh, it's about how people can stay in your mind, even though they're, they're physically gone. You It's a very personal thing if you put it on paper in a song and you present it to your audience. How personal can you get? Writing music is kind of like uh, channeling things and, and therapeutical so that when I deal with an emotion through a song, I kind of put it in a package and when it's done, it's there and it's almost like it's released from me. So the drama is, is not there anymore. No, it's a, it's, it has become a story and um, I, would never, I would never release a song or talk about a song that still was part of a drama in my life because that would be too personal. But if it's something that is has kind of passed, an emotion that has passed and that I have dealt with, then I can talk about it without crying or without being emotional, then it's fine. Then I think that if I present it in the right way, I can give something to people with it. Yeah. Uh, and so it's it's always an intuition, intuitive thing. Is is, is the, am, I, am I ready to release this feeling to people? Am I am I done with it? Like done with it? Have I concluded so that I can bring it forward? Because there's something a friend of mine told me once that if you talk about something emotional that's going on that you're not finished with. It's almost like leaking energy when you start talking about it to people because you actually need to have it close to you so that you can you can deal with it yourself. And then when it's done, you can kind of deliver it as something that is pure. And yeah. you know, so I don't feel, you know, if I wouldn't have told you about the dreams, it could be about anything, this song. Um, and uh, it could be about a love that's lost or whatever. But uh, if I feel that something's too personal, I don't tell the story. Why did you want to release two albums in one year? Well, when I started recording something that I thought would be one album, yeah. I had 16 songs uh, and uh, then I added a new song during the pandemic's first months of the pandemics and also an acoustic version of one of the other songs. And they are all part of the same song cycle in a way. They're part of a, a songwriting period of my life, which they're very connected to each other when it comes to lyrics. And um, so I, I recorded everything. And then I found that uh, three or four of the songs that I tried to make big and fitting like of the album that I was actually meant to make, I found that they had to be intimate. They had to be brought down. And when I'd done that, I saw that I had half, half of intimate acoustic songs and a more like bigger production. And since they are so fitted together, 
I didn't want to release the, the, the other one like a year from now because it would be strange. I would be, have to tell the same story again in a way. So I want to move on and, and move on from this song cycle. And uh, when I start a new album, it's, it's a different cycle. He met her in the morning sun He squinted his eyes cause the backlight was strong But I didn't want it to be a double album either because it would be too much information at once. So I I decided that I could give people a few weeks in between. Yeah. And it was an experiment. We, you know, we didn't know how that's going to be be um, received and we've just we've record we have released I think 12 songs before even re- releasing the albums and it was a new way of doing it. We tried to find a way that kind of fits the modern time of releasing songs, but we always we also wanted to release albums, so we kind of tried to find a, a hybrid, and it has worked really well. He met her in the morning sun, and she remembers every fiber in the air. I think that every song that released has. Uh, made a certain point of momentum and they have been so different from each other so different people have like different songs Mm -hmm. and now when we released after the great storm all the reviews also mentioned the next album so they that was almost like a free marketing of the next album so it's so this month that i'm in now that is in between it's it feels like it's only been positive it's also a new way of doing it so people are interested just because of that as well so as you were saying, you want to talk about the fact. Our beauty holds a hand of sorrow. You have to think at least two or three times about this title. Mm-hmm. Okay, beauty, uh, hand, hand of sorrow. Uh, mm-hmm. What happens? <laughs> what happens? <laughs> <laughs> it's not good that we need to think a little bit these yeah, days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's an imagery of, of an experience that I've had uh, through losing my father, the grief of losing someone, and also how... Uh, when you are in deep uh, sorrow, you also experience joy because if you are connected to deep feelings, you can also feel the other feelings. And mm-hmm. if you're not connected to any feelings, you probably won't laugh and even, right. or cry. They're just going to be here. When you miss someone, they become uh, alive in that moment. When you stop and miss someone, they become alive and they become 3D. And that is beautiful because you're not connected to that all the time. No. But when you're in, in, in the sorrow, in, in your longing, they become, uh, they become clearer to you. So you kind of meet them in your mind. And so there were a lot of thoughts around that when my father passed, how, how weird it was that also a lot of things was, were very, it was beautiful as well. Some beautiful experiences uh, in that time. Just before this great storm that you experienced, um, we did a recording in Amsterdam in our mm-hmm. studio. How do you look back at that part of life? I mean, what, is that a completely different chapter in your life because you were hospitalized in 2012? No, uh, it's kind of, it does feel like a before and after uh, because I'd made some really important changes. And when I went to see you and did that uh, session, which was really lovely, I, when I, I looked at it again now this year, I know that in, in those years before I got sick, I, I was not happy. I was, uh, the only places I was happy was in my music. I was happy on tour. I was happy on stage. I was happy in the studio. 
but uh, I hadn't really got my life sorted at that time. I had been through a really uh, like a, a kind of a dark relationship that I wasn't the dark one, but I was kind of drawn into a dark personality and I was not happy those years and I was I didn't sleep well. There was a lot of things that weren't happy that didn't make me happy. And so um, and when you when you do that, when you're not happy, you don't sleep, you feel uh, there's a lot of things that comes as as uh, symptoms of that. Uh, so when I got sick, uh, I decided I have to change uh, my attitude towards things. You know, I have to prioritize and be careful with with um, who I spend time with, who I prioritize, and just take more care of myself. And um, the music has always been important and fundamental all through my career. But my personal life has been very up and down. And, and But since 2013, 14, I have felt really stable and happy. It's been a different, different time. So there is a before and after, definitely. No more, and do not let him sigh now, though he is far away. You played Claudio Monteverdi's Lamento della Ninfa. We get a lot of reactions ever since. Mm. Not in the first case when we played it on television in a regular show, but over the years it's gotten more weight. It feels like mm. it's still there and people still react on it. Mm. How does it feel while doing a cover of a song that was originally written somewhere in the mid of 16th century? Mm -hmm. Right? How does it feel uh, being rewarded for that? I mean, it's such it's such a completely new way of covering a classical mm. artist like Claudio Monteverdi. When I fall in love with uh, a piece of music like that from that age, I fall in love with the melody. I fall in love with how it's built. And I instantly feel that it's something that could have, that I can, um, I can do something with it that hasn't been done before. And it starts to itch in my hands and I just really want to try. Um, because classical recordings are very, are very conservative and uh, you're supposed to do things in a certain way. Yeah. And I feel that that is uh, not very constructive in art, you know, you have to be able to challenge art and try to find new beauty in, in that genius music. Love me, love me, love me, and please don't speak. The melodic line of uh, Amor Monteverde is just amazing how it's it's so inspiring to me. For instance, for Don't Run and Hide, uh, for the album uh, after the Restorm album, I was very inspired by that way of writing. Like you have a bass line that just goes, continue, basso continue, just goes around. And the melody is just moving up and down in that harmonic world, but it changes all the time and you find different different mem phrasing and, and their melodies, but it's still the same harmonics. And you kind of can create a chorus and a verse, but it's still the same harmonic all the time. And I was very inspired by that. I hear you roaming in the night You can't let go You are caught How do you see your career at this very moment while still being in the midst of Corona? Do you see uh, it like this is also some sort of storm, great storm, and the world will go on? How do you look at that? Um, it's hard to know, isn't it? That doesn't feel, I don't feel like people do know, but 
we are hoping more than we know, I guess, that things will be okay. Um, uh, career-wise, I feel that I'm laying down a foundation for a future. Like uh, this music will be out there and people will listen to it, hopefully, even though I'm not on tour in a while. Um, my hope is that the tour next fall will happen. Uh, and by then people have heard the songs many times. Usually I go on tour when the album's out, like bam, like that. And uh, uh, and this has been a new, new experience, just being able to just release the albums and not rehearse and go on tour. And I think I will do that next time as well. I feel that this is a better way of doing it because it makes me happier and it makes it more fun to release the albums because you have time to, to be in it. Uh, but um, I hope and I think that we will solve this. There's a lot of other things I'm more worried about in the world. But I think we'll get out of this situation because I think that the effort and the resources that are laid down are amazing and how they found vaccines this fast. And I think it's also an example of what would happen if we would take the climate crisis as seriously as this. We could be able to make really big progress in a very short time if we, if we felt the urgency in the same way as we do now. you actually think that your way of working will never be the same again? No, at, at least not with the, the timing of albums and touring. I think I will probably give it a few months before I go out on tour when, I, when an album has just came, come out because I think it's healthier for me. And it's also somehow better for the audience because they have some time to hear the songs before you come out. Yeah. So I think that definitely maybe a three month period or something that you actually wait. Yeah. I think that's a good good one. So what are your plans for this winter? Stay home? Yeah, um, I, I'm, tr I'm trying to be careful too, since I have been really sick twice in my life. I don't want to have this one. No. Uh, I just don't want to go through that. Uh, that sounds, if you get it for real, it sounds really hard. So just because of the experience that I've had with being really sick makes me not want this at all. Uh, and I'm not sure if it's more dangerous to me than others, but they don't know that. But I, I do take medication. I have to kind of take care of myself, so I'm a bit careful. So I don't really challenge that so much. I'll probably stay mostly home. I'm gonna try to see my mom and and just kind of keep keep working online and keep working with my albums and just take it as it comes, I guess. Yeah. See what happens. Well, I hope to see you soon anyway. Thank you very much for your time now. It's lovely to talk to you. Same here. And let's meet somewhere in 2021. And thanks again for the beautiful albums. I love it. Thank, oh, thank you. Thank you very thanks much. So much.